played the Broncos. You guys ran the ball re really well and have a, a pretty balanced offensive attack. Is that kind of your vision for what this offense is? And kind of yeah, I mean, I I think we've always wanted to be that way. Um, you know, sometimes the score and in many cases down in distance um, can, you know, I would say get in the way of that. But, um, you know, if you have your druthers, you, you can do a lot of things well, you know, and, and hopefully you can run it, throw it on your terms, convert on third down, uh, avoid penalties, you know, which we, we obviously need to do a better job of offensively. Um, but we've, we've actually gotten in our own way in that, in that regard relative to some games, relative to the balance that we've been able to have. So, um, yeah, in an ideal world, you'd love to be balanced every week. Sometimes teams do things defensively that would um, maybe make you want to do something other than that to be you know, productive, you know, stacking the box and giving the opportunities to throw it or what have you. But um, by and large, that would be the goal. That's true. Sure. In, a, in a bigger sense, um, like when you, know, you take, take over the Raiders and Nathaniel taking over the Broncos and other first-year coaches in first-year uh, situations, the ones that do work right off the bat and the ones that don't, is there any kind of – common denominator or just especially when you look at the scores of these games are all mm -hmm. almost every game seems to be coming down close yeah yeah um I I haven't been able to obviously take time and study that I think there's so many things that go into a successful day on Sunday um <clears throat> and there's so many things that you would need to have to be you know to have a successful start to your year to have a successful year period um you know there's it's not it's not one thing it's not two things you know there's a number of things that you know that you you work on to try to give yourself an a, a opportunity to win and that you probably need to happen for yourselves you know um some of that is health related some of it is you know strategy some of it is you know scheme some of it's talent some of it's culture uh some of it's when you play somebody um there's a lot of things that could go into changing an outcome i mean clearly we could have done a handful of things better and we would be talking about a completely different record at this point but that's true for all the teams you know I don't think anybody's out there winning every game by 21 points and so you take a handful of plays from their games and switch it and you know so ultimately what it comes down to is is what we do you know through the week to get ourselves ready and then give ourselves the best opportunity to be right there at the end and then hopefully we make some good adjustments in the game as coaches, good calls in the game, and then our players are able to go out there and execute, you know, in those critical situations to give us the edge. Um, you know, I don't – it's it's hard to say there's one thing, you know. And I have some friends that are doing well right now, and I have some friends that aren't, you know what I mean? And it is what it is. And, and sometimes there's um, some things you can really point to and address right away, and sometimes it's just a longer process, you know. And so – I look at our guys each day, and look, they they are they come from different places. They come from different places. Some of them were here, some of them weren't here. Some of them are young, some of them are older. Um, and we're trying to kind of all of us together um, it get acclimated to a new way of doing certain things. We, there's not everything we do different, but and so sometimes that happens a little quicker than others. Sometimes it does not, you know. So I think the best thing we could do is keep putting our line in the water and keep giving ourselves an opportunity to, to catch a fish there at the end. And um, we've done that, you know. We just got to start, you know, pulling some fish out of the water. That is pretty correct, but I think it's a, right around 7% of the snaps, offensive snaps, where you had Darren, Hunter, Devontae, and Derek Carr out there. Uh, yeah. I know you're not making any excuses, but yeah. how – that's well, I mean, that's that's the, that was the goal that, you know, I mean, obviously when you go into a season and um, those players are all um, obviously very – decorated guys you know and um you know any team that has players on whatever side of the ball it is that you're you're kind of putting the the plan together and counting on those guys to to really be a big piece of your puzzle um and you do without them and you know you do the best you can you know that's obviously uh, an area where we, we we haven't been able to stay as healthy as we would have liked but you know we're not the only team like that we're not that's not unique to the raiders and uh, we, st we still have put ourselves in position to have a chance to win. That's a fact. So, um, you know, we, we'd love to be able to say we could put those guys out there 90% of the time, but it has not worked out that way, and such is life in the NFL.
Gosh, when your offense is at its best, you've had multiple tight ends, not one, just mm -hmm. multiple. Obviously, you can't control Darren's injury, but yep. looking long term, is Foster Moreau a guy with your experience with tight ends? You're like, yeah, I can see him fitting here in this yeah. division. Yeah, Foster's, yes, Foster's done a really nice job. Um, Foster's tough. Foster's unselfish. He's smart. Uh, he works really hard at it. And Foster has, you know, tight ends have to do a lot of things, you know, and some guys may have a little bit more of an area of strength. You know, Darren's certainly a, a, a different type of player because of his speed. Um, but tight ends have to block, they have to catch, they have to protect, um, you know, and they're used all over the formation. And Foster's skill set has allowed him to be productive in multiple ways. He's not just a blocker. He's not just a pass receiver. We've used him in protection and created big plays to others because he's doing his job. So, uh, and he's a phenomenal teammate, phenomenal. Um, you know, his parents did an incredible job of raising him, and um, he he's such a leader for us. Um, he's not a captain, but he behaves like one, and uh, our team follows him like that. I know they've had some personnel changes, but Denver's defensive numbers are, are really solid in, in all phases. What are you seeing that makes them so effective here through the first half of the season? Yeah, they're – they don't give up a lot of easy plays. Um, you know, there's not a lot of – you don't put on the tape and say, well, there's a great opportunity to, you know, crease them on this, that, or the other. Um, they've done a, a really good job of limiting those. So they force you to drive the ball. Um, they're really good on third down. Um, and they create negative plays. So, you know, when they create a negative play and on third and seven plus, I want to say that they're giving up 11% conversions on third and seven per plus, which is a, a, a tiny number. Um, so obviously there's a tug of war there, you know, we have to do a good job or try to do a good job of avoiding negative situations so we can stay in second and shorter, third and shorter, and try to keep moving the ball down the field. Um, and they do a tremendous job of not allowing that. And so, um, there's just nothing easy, you know, they, they play a, um, that their scheme has enough variety to it that they can get you with that. Um, they change it up a little bit. He's done a really nice job as a coordinator. He's done a really nice job of, of changing it up from week to week a little bit, um, but also giving his, his guys an opportunity to really play fast and aggressive. And they've lost some guys up front that are good players, and they had – I give George a lot of credit – they had some really good depth behind those players, you know, that they've accumulated over time in the draft, so on and so forth. Um, you know, Chubb being out, Gregory being out, and then the guys on the edge, Browning and Benita. I mean, those guys have still been able to make plays and be disruptive. So um, got a lot of respect for what they've done in terms of building the roster defensively. They got a lot of good players, and their depth has really – it's really stood out to me as you watch them throughout the course of the season because they've had to do without a number of guys. Jerry Tillery to the roster, How? what are your expectations for him in this particular game and this week? Yeah, um, you know, he's he's really – he's an interesting guy. I mean, he what a, what a fun guy to have here. Um, but he's really worked really hard to catch up, you know. I mean, the system that he was in, um, the terminology is different. So those kind of things are – there's some barriers there that we got to break down, obviously. Um, but he's working his butt off to be able to try to do that as quickly as possible. So – um, we'll give him another day of practice here today, see where we're at after today, and then how big the role could be, um, you know, if he's active on Sunday so that we can, you know, I don't want to put him out there and put him in positions where he's just not able to be successful because he doesn't really understand what it is yet. So um, we're going to take this whole body of work for the week and evaluate it, talk to him about it, see how he feels, and then kind of cut the role down if you can to something that, okay, he really understands this stuff and we'll let him go out there and play his best. Coach, in each locker room, you know, everybody has a different way of motivating each other, you know, whether it be rah-rah, whether it's mm -hmm. reactions. Can you pinpoint, you know, a couple of guys in the locker room you can see that kind of keeping the rest of the guys on ease throughout the stressful season? Um, yeah, we have we have a number of guys that, that I'd say do that. Um, you know, and I think the stress part of it is really something that, you know, you have to control on your own, you know, and, and that lends itself to how much you uh, allow other things to impact your day-to-day -day behavior and, and how you approach your work day, um, which I don't really see a lot of that from our guys, um, you know, but I, you know, when you have, you know, some, some really good personalities on your team, um, Denzel, Max, you know, Mac Hollins, uh, these guys, you know, Brandon Bolden, um, they can keep it light. 
but they also know when to turn it up a little bit, you know. So um, I think we've tried to find a really good balance between, um, you know, a, a stressful type of an environment, which we don't have right now inside, uh, and the urgency required for us to do a little bit more to win. And so um, I give them a lot of credit. The players have done a really good job. I think the coaches have done a really good job of just trying to stay the course, you know, let's not raise the temperature in the building. We don't need to do that. Uh, we know what we need to do to try to win, and I think those guys have, have really uh, risen to that part of the challenge, and hopefully we can have another good day today. Josh, stress is not good, but there's nothing wrong with pressure. As a coach, how do you learn to apply things on that? Really, it's an issue. Stay the same. Stay the same. And we've been doing it since we, since we met in phase one. You know what I mean? And so I think as long as we were applying the right amount of pressure to do things the right way and or the right amount of teaching, I don't really call it pressure as much as I would say. We, we just want to teach them to, to try to do it the right way. And if we don't do something right, let's correct it the appropriate way and try to keep moving forward and getting better. Um, I think the, the, different, the, the, the difference you would feel is if we had a change, you know, in that behavior. And I don't think we've done that. So... Um, we've wanted things done. I mean, you, you guys have heard me, you know, in training camp and, you know, things like that where you're out there yelling and hollering about things not being done the right way. I mean, we didn't have any record then, you know what I mean? And so um, just being consistent and trying to hold ourselves first and then our teammates and our other guys with us to the same standard every day, I think that's really what we want to do. And the fact that we haven't changed a whole lot in that regard, I think is the right thing to do at this time of the year. The other day, it sounded like uh, Nate House was trending toward next week. Is that still the case? We'll see. Um, like I said, as soon as he's ready to roll, I would imagine that he'll be, uh, you know, he's itching to get out there. So this is literally just a medical thing, you know what I mean? So um, there's obviously some things that we have to make sure we clear. Once we clear them, then I think, um, you know, we'll get him out there as soon as he's ready to roll. And, uh, again, I think we're getting close. Josh, on offense, you guys have – Face zone coverage at the second highest rate in the league, and a lot of those zones have been, you know, two high safety zones. When teams are kind of approaching you with those softer looks, what kind of challenges does that, does that present for you? Uh, it presents opportunities, and it presents challenges to do things that you know in your in your repertoire that is just not very good against those coverages. So um, I think it just makes you adjust, you know, the type of things you do. Um, certainly, when player when when people keep um, you know, two safeties deep, you know, it, it gives you a fair fight in every run play. You know, we know that. Uh, and I think we've tried to take advantage of some of those looks throughout the course of the season and, and do the best we could with those. Um, it also, you know, puts a premium on the interior part of the passing game, you know, because when you put safeties over top here and here, then the, the place where they're really, in the, you know, they, they defend the best is outside the numbers. And so the, the guys on the inside part of the formation, the tight ends, the players in the slot, um, those type of the backs, uh, those type of players have more opportunities because the help is not on them. And so, um, you know, I think you've seen us do some different things with the backs. You've seen us move Devontae inside some. Obviously, the tight ends, slot receivers, you know, have a little bit more opportunity when that, when that presents itself. And you need to be able to run the ball. I mean, that's really a, a key factor when, that, when that's the way you're getting played. One more, Hondo. Josh, when you've got a player like Nate, I mean, he would play with a leather helmet if you'd let him. He just loves the game. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for you to protect him from himself? Uh, yeah, you, that's why we, we have to make sure that they give us the go-ahead. Because if it's up to me and Nate, we probably he would have probably played four weeks ago. You know what I mean? So, uh, and that's a tribute to Nate, you know, his toughness and his desire and love for football. I mean, he did it in the game. When he heard it in the Kansas City game, he went in and said, throw a cast on it, and I'm going back out and playing. You know, and so the reality is, is you know, um, there's probably a handful of players that would do that, and there's no question because they, they have that kind of demeanor and toughness about them, and uh, Nate's certainly one of them. But I think the medical people will make sure that, you know, when it's okay to go out there and do it so he doesn't re-injure it, because obviously nobody wants that. Um, Nate will be out there as soon as he can. All right. so, yep, thank you. Thank you.